First of all, I do want to welcome all of you to the 2024 Bill Page Franklin Book Festival. And I'd also like just to take just a second to thank our library staff, quite awesome people, uh, our director Jessica Jeffers, Jeffy Nicholson, Amber Hart, and I'd like to thank our organizers along with me. There's Tom Wood, Tim Bishop, Sally Burbank, Susan Burdor. Thanks to Kristen Tug, our children's and middle grade leader. Thanks to our speakers, our special speakers, Paige Hurley and Stephen Womack. Thanks to all the moderators and all the panelists who will be sharing through this weekend. Thank you all as you promote your books for helping to keep alive Bill Peach's dream, having a book festival in his beloved town of Franklin. This is the fourth consecutive festival now named in his honor. Bill ran the first three by himself. August the 16, 1998, I drove to downtown Franklin and met Bill Peach on the corner of 4th and Main. He signed the 30th of 3,000 books, Random Thoughts Left and Right, and handed it to me outside Pig and Peach, his men's clothing store. It's one of my first memories of Bill. In his working years, Bill was always at that corner talking to people, selling suits, selling his books. In his retirement years, he ventured a half block south of Maine to Mary's, <laughs> sat at a table with his books spread out in front of him, and talked to people. He lived what he loved, books, talking about politics, religion, and philosophy, and downtown Franklin. He became known as the Main Street Philosopher, a title given to him by Tom T. Hall. It was also the title of his last book, which I had the honor of editing. Bill was chairman of the board when I joined the Williamson County Council for the Written Word, our once very active literary organization in the county. I worked with Bill for 25 years in the council in Barnes & Noble Writers Groups and our current author circle of Middle Tennessee, encouraging, educating, and empowering writers. One thing over the years that I learned about Bill, as long as things went smoothly and people were doing their, their jobs and doing them well and right and moving forward with their mission, Bill was content to sit back and blend in and pitch in occasionally to help. But the minute things went off track, Bill was up on his feet and just ready to be there and take the lead and spearhead some good change. For example, when the Council for the Written Word shut down against his liking and understanding of the mission and the importance of that organization, Bill stepped up and started the author's circle which he has been managing for many years now because he wanted opportunities for local authors to market their books. He wanted a place to talk about writing and publishing. He wanted a way to celebrate the written word. And so here we are today, celebrating books and celebrating Bill. I like the new title, given to Bill by Authors Circle member Jim Nesbitt, Shepherd of Authors. Mm -hmm. I want to just echo what Kathy said. Um, thank everybody for coming out here. Um, I'm gonna be sitting right over here this weekend, and I am one of the timekeepers. So, you know, keep an eye on me over here. I'm gonna, you know, I'll flash y'all four minutes. Okay. So, so yeah. now Kathy's a little stricter than I am about time. She's got this thing, this whole weekend down to the second. She, she's timed it out perfectly. 
I'm a little looser. I'll give you all a little leeway. But just remember, if you go over your time, that's less time you're going to have to sell your books, be able to talk to people. And so, so we're going to keep this going, keep it moving along. Um, a memory of, I have a bill, dear friend, I've known him for 20 years probably, back when I was at the tennis end. And, but, and I approached him when I got an idea for my novel and he would, he helped me uh, get a few things. But one thing we had in common, we both like to inform, inspire, and entertain with our writings. And if you did one, great. If you did two, better. And if you, the trifecta was doing all three of them. So, you know, that, that was what he kind of inspired me. And um, this is his event still. We got together and uh, decided that we're going to name this after Bill. So, you know, a novel idea. That's, that's, Bill had a great sense of humor. He told me uh, because I was in sports, he would like to uh, talk about sports and the joke. Uh, the goalie of the Nashville Predators was Pekka Rene. And he said, always, when I first heard I thought that was one name, Pecorine. <laughs> so, uh, how am I doing? Go <laughs> time. <laughs> so, let me talk this along. I want to introduce uh, Bill's favorite daughter, Rebecca, and Bill's favorite daughter, uh, Dee. Yeah. And, and his favorite daughter, Lucy, couldn't be here today. She's Florida, I think you said. So, so, come up and just... I want to introduce the Okay, well, y'all welcome today. If y'all want to sit down right here, well, we may call you back. <laughs> it's a great honor for me today to welcome to our midst the Honorable Sam Whitson, who represents the 65th District in the Tennessee House of Representatives, which is in Western Williamson County, including this, the library's location. I wish the middle daughter was here. I was a middle son, so I could <laughs> Holly, would you come up with Well, thank you. Uh, Bill Peach was one of the finest men I've ever met in my life. Uh, we developed a close friendship over the years, and I'll never forget uh, just a few days before he passed away, he called me and uh, shared his concern for our public schools, and we both shared that concern. And uh, he gave me great advice. I always followed his advice when he came to our public schools because Bill was so devoted to this county and to the students and to the future of this county. And so when I learned of his passing, uh, I introduced a house joint resolution in his honor. And I have a copy for each one of the girls and I would like to read a part of it. It's kind of long. I don't know if I'll get four minutes in. So I'll <laughs> <laughs> give, give me just copies I think it went to your system it's not here and here's each one of y'all let me just read a, a small part of this if I could state of Tennessee house joint resolution house of representatives by representative Whitson Clemens Love Cameron and Senator Yarborough a resolution to honor the memory of William Strickland Peach of Franklin whereas members of the General Assembly are greatly sad to learn of this passing of Bill Peach, whereas Bill Peach was a simpler public servant, a professional who worked tirelessly to improve the quality of life for his fellow citizens in numerous capacities. He did he did so many things. Um, that when you read this, it's just absolutely incredible. We'll leave a copy up here for y'all to take a look at. Um, we're sad that his passing, and uh, he's finally. Uh, well, he enjoyed his loving companionship of his wife of 59 years, Emily Peach, and was the proud father of Rebecca, Lucy, and Dia, the loving grandfather of so many others here. That, uh, it's amazing. He had a lot of grandfathers. 
Bill Peach leaves behind a legacy of integrity in public life, compassion, and loyalty in private life, and diligence and dedication to all his chosen, chosen endeavors. Where it is fitting that members of the General Assembly should pause to remember the life of this exceptional public servant and human being. Therefore, be it resolved by the House of Representatives of the 113th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, the Senate concurred that we honor the memory of Bill Peach. Reflecting fondly upon his impeccable character and stalwart commitment to the living to examine life with courage and conviction, be it resolved that we express our sympathy and offer our condolences to the family. Mr. Peach signed the League Governor Cameron Sexton, Speaker of the House, Speaker uh, Randy McNally of the Senate, and myself. And so, and for each one of y'all, your dad's memory, I have you a Tennessee flag. Oh, no. So at this time, I'd like to ask my friend Holly McCall to come up and say a few words, and, uh, and uh, they were very close friends also. Thanks, Sam. Um, it's always hard for me to say a few words, but I'm really <laughs> I'm actually really honored to be here and to be speaking because I'm 60 years old and I'm a native of Franklin, and I honestly don't remember a time I did not know the Peaches. Um, I grew up with Rebecca and Lucy and Medea, and our woman Medea was literally a baby. And, you know, when I was a kid, most dads worked and the moms were still stay at home. So you knew everybody's mother, but you didn't really know the dads, except in Mr. Peach's case. And we knew Mr. Peach, like he was involved with the girls, he'd come swimming with them. Of course, he had his store on Main Street. And my family became so integrally involved with the Peaches. My mother and Mr. Peach served on the Franklin Special School Board together, and I ended up he gave me a job in the store. I'd come home at college, work there at Christmas, and then after I got out of college, I had nothing to do yet. He gave me a job, and he probably didn't really need me. Um, but I just have so many wonderful memories of Bill and Emily and all my girls, and I really think there's nobody who deserves this honor more than he does. He loved, as you know, if you knew him at all, he loved writing, he loved the written word, and I could have my own session telling Bill Peach stories about the things that I learned and heard from him while I was working in the store, propping up the counter and selling neckties. But, um, <laughs> you know, I miss him terribly. And, you know, he died in December. It hit me harder than I thought it would because he's one of those people you just never think about. When you know these people all your life and you love them, you just can't imagine them being gone. And then they're gone. And um, so I don't, just don't think that we can award him and remember him enough. Thank you. I want to thank Kathy Rhodes for helping us do this today. Uh, Holly and I have been conspiring how we were going to do this resolution. <laughs> and when we saw about the book festival, I said, perfect. So we uh, we made sure with the help of Kathy that we were able to do this today. Again, thank you. Would thank you, you ladies like to say something? Um. Um, thanks everybody uh, we are overwhelmed um, and since dad's passing um, it, it has been overwhelming um, of course we've always known um, author circle and been involved with author circle but we're overwhelmed with how much you guys have done to really bring dad's dream to the forefront and it was his dream he believed that everybody had a voice and had stories to tell and that they were worth hearing and that that's what was really missing. And that's what makes Williamson County and our regional community um, so wonderful is that we have great stories to tell and we have so many talents to share. And so I still hear so many stories. As soon as somebody says, oh, you know, we miss your dad. You know, I moved to Franklin because of a conversation with your dad. Or, oh, I wrote a book because of a conversation with your dad. Or, oh, hey, I ran for office because of a conversation <laughs> with your dad. And you just don't realize, because, of course, we think he's the best guy in the whole wide world. <laughs> but um, you just don't realize how much power you have as an individual. And each of us has that power. And dad really used it to its full potential. And I hope it inspires everyone to tell their story, whether it's in a book or in a conversation or in somebody visiting Franklin <coughs> to move here or to somebody who needs to run for political office or encourage others to run for political office. But um, really, uh, I'm really just grateful to the library, to Authors Circle of Middle Tennessee, and everybody who's shared a story about dad. Um, we 
are overwhelmed, but feel very, very loved. So thank you again. Thank you.